at some stage our forefathers somewhere down the line our forefathers were not Muslim do you know that they accepted Islam even if someone has some of their forefathers out in the Sahaba radiallahu anhum but the Sahaba radiallahu anhum also accepted Islam they were not Muslimin before Islam came obviously they accepted the deen now what I am saying is because if we were to treat every non-Muslim as a potential Muslim throughout our lives whether they accepted it in our lives or not and whether they accepted it before they died or not if we treated them as potential Muslims we would solve the problems of the globe by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we need to make sure we understand a person dislikes a bad habit a person dislikes for example that which is wrong but the individual we always have hope subhanallah there is a distinct difference in the sharia distinct difference in islam between the individual and the act we need to understand this and we need to constantly have hope if i were to make mention for example of a person just for example if i were to say a name of someone who's caused a lot of harm to you part of your weakness would be to say this man is evil no hope we're closing the chapter on him and he's going to help that's part of our weakness but the character of a Muslim would always have hope look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam if you were to ask yourself who was or give me a name of a person who harmed him the most in the early stages I'm sure you would agree with me the name Abu Jahl I'm sure you would agree Abu Jahl what was he he was one of the most outspoken most hardcore hardline enemies of Islam who who actually went out of his way to cause bodily harm physical harm to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al umarain Oh Allah grant strength to Islam through the acceptance of Islam of one of these two who were those two the two main enemies Allahu Akbar